pleasure to interview one of the master metaphysical teachers out here in the community, Dr. Delbert Blair. How are you doing, Dr. Delbert Blair? Well, Rich, I'm doing well, especially now that you're here and I'm here in your wonderful city that I've <laughs> waited now, what, 14 years to get back to. Wow. So I appreciate you extending that to me and it's an honor. Yeah, well, all right, well, we got a lot to talk about. You got the lecture happening tomorrow. Today, we're going to do the interview today. Uh, try to get as much information out the master as possible. Um, before we get started, I want you to show the people you have some information on the diodes. So I want you to show the people uh, what particular information that you have that's extremely important for them at this time in their life before we get started. Okay. Well, I appreciate the deference and respect. I'm not a master. I've never claimed to be a master. That's been a title sometimes it's been put upon me. Mm -hmm. But it's not a master. I can never master metaphysics, and that's the journey that I've partaken in this lifetime to understand metaphysics. You have masters around, I'm not one. Mm -hmm. As a student of metaphysics, which I guess I'll be for lifetimes, I find that there's really no other venture, anything I can do on this planet that's more worthy, more intriguing, more interesting, and more time consuming. So with that one, I respect you and respect me for saying that, but I'm not a master. I'm simply a teacher teaching some, learning from others, and that's about it. On diodes, now we can definitely talk about that. Diodes in general are two-way rectifiers if you're using electronics. Now, most people get it confused because in electronics you have things that act as a capacity, capacitor and a channeler which carry current. What these are natural products. There's nothing electrical about them. They're made from magnets and crystals, and the whole catch is a secret formula which nobody so far has been able to back engineer, and I've had them to say, oh, I can make this into a fed eight, go ahead and try it. Uh, what they do is to stop the low frequencies that are in many things that are called now radiation from harming you as much as they normally would, and completely stopping them on some levels. Now let me explain that too. We have, uh, in 251 major cities here in the United States, towers. 252. There's one that it doesn't. These towers have different heights. And the heights and the way they look mean certain things. You have some towers that are used for cell phones, for government defense switches, for carrier ways, for uh, utility companies, and then sometimes some just plain boxes that corporations use to, to cheat and not have to pay for some of the facilities that are being used. But the ones that you see that are for the cell phones can be very dangerous. And the ones that you see that are 360 foot tall, they seem to have seals or screens up their veins on them, they're extremely dangerous. Those are used for mind control. The other ones, which I am now gonna go into for defense of, are used to get cell phones and things like this working. All the cities now here are talking about Wi-Fi. And they're all talking about next year when all cities are major Wi-Fi. Well, all cities, 251 of the 252 major ones again, went Wi-Fi some time ago. Which means that there is now a carrier wave or wind or an energy that is now transmitted without a wire directly to an apparatus. And one of the apparatuses that everybody has is a cell phone. What's interesting about the cell phone is that now, you, some people now have two or three cell phones in one family. There's getting as common as television sets, and when television sets first came out, of course, they were very expensive. Now they're economically feasible. So, when you use that cell phone, and I see you've got one there too, and I've got one here too, but the difference between those that are aware and those that aren't is what's on the back of this cell phone. And this cell phone here, there's a little gadget, and that is called a diode. Put that up, let me, let me zoom in. Okay. There you go. A diode that you see there, can be bought by anyone that wants it. We're one of the distributing places and companies for it. And that's what it looks like when it's packaged. You put this on your cell phone and you put it right over the battery or any other flat surface. What that does is to raise the frequency of the cell phone wave that's coming in to make you be able to hear audibility, to hear sound at it again. Low frequency, and it's very easy to understand, is very dangerous. The lower the frequency, potentially more dangerous is that frequency. High frequencies, well, our whole planet is full of high frequency. We walk through a sea of frequencies each day. In fact, if we could see like an x-ray machine or so, 
we'd be afraid because we see lines of energy just everywhere, like cobwebs and spider webs. But the low frequencies are the ones that are bad for the central nervous system, for the left and right hemispheres of the brain, for the eyes, for the ears, everything electrical and everything magnetic within your body, they tend to distort. And when you use these cell phones, the potential now, it used to be a big argument about it. I was a Dr. Carlo at one time that was hired by some of the manufacturers of these cell phones to prove that cell phones were safe. Instead, he said after eight months study, they're far from anything but safe. And I have to agree, as many other scientists and researchers do agree, they are very harmful. The potential when you hold this thing up to your ear and you start talking, after four and a half minutes, your whole, if you could see that, and we have, I'll be showing it at our lecture tomorrow, some of these infrared photographies and stuff like this. Everything and everything begins to turn red. Red means radiation. Slow frequency, harmful radiation. When the diode is put on it, within five and a half minutes afterwards, all that is corrected. And if you use a diode on a regular basis, it never starts in the first place because what it does is to raise that low frequency to a frequency that is not harmful to your body. So in that sense, you say it's getting rid of radiation. Toward that end, we have 11 different kinds of diodes because what we also understood, that particular device, and by the way now, they're not only making these cell phones now that you can talk on them, but as you know, and you could probably tell me about them, play games on them, yeah. store material on them, get a whole codex list up in there. I mean, it's just now just like a walking television set or so. Well, they, they have something stronger than Wi-Fi called a 3G network. Have you heard of that? No, I haven't. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's supposed to be faster and, and uh, yeah, it's supposed to be more fast and more powerful than Wi-Fi. And that's already on the market. Yeah, it's on the yeah, it's through on the, cell phones. Yeah, through cell phones because I know they have it overseas. Where um, see what 3G allows you to do is it allows you to talk to somebody and watch them and look at them at the same time. Oh, you know, and they have that overseas. Okay. So you know, now probably next year, AT and T offers it now. Other cell T-Mobile and them hasn't caught on yet. But what you'll see now is people talking on their phone while they're looking at the person that they're talking to. to. Yeah. I didn't know, but you call it 3G. 3G network, so you yeah. You just taught me. This is why I say yeah. I'm not a master, I'm a student. I always <laughs> will be a student. So, in doing that now, you've got your, what you've got to say is a TV radio communicating device that also is being used now to transcript your own sound and audibility. With that in mind, it makes it even more dangerous because it now means you're using television type carrier waves in addition to the sound waves. Mm -hmm. This jaw and these other things you're using, which means that all that energy is now going into your head. Mm -hmm. It means that all that energy now is potentially frying your brain, can cause damage to the optic thalamus nerve, to the tympanic membrane, to the throat, and of course, since this is your head, mm -hmm. your brains. Mm -hmm. And I think most of us need brain repair anyway, I know I do. <laughs> I definitely can't have anything that's going to cause my brains to be deficient or any of the neurons soon as or so to. To, to operate on a lower frequency. So all the more reasons why I say you need diodes with these things. In addition to which, there are people that walk around and they have in their ear something that's called a Bluetooth. Yes. Now they've even got some new, uh, higher modifications for that, but let's just take the standard Bluetooth. There was a convention that they had in Las Vegas this summer, it was an electronic convention with companies from all around the globe uh, coming there to display their products. And they came out with a blackjack, a blue, a blackjack, a blackberry, and some other things. Samsung came up without giving plugs. Anyway, these things are emitting up to 98 frequencies of modulation, or what they call megahertz. Two megahertz is a sufficient. After three, you begin to radiate yourself. These things generated 98, which means they're very detrimental. I'll be very nice with the choice of words very harmful to potential and people don't have a clue. They just use them and put nothing on them. The diodes, again, as I say, boost up the speed of the wave, of the carrier waves. The, fire, the faster the speed, the less harmful potentially to you because the fast ones, as I say, we walk through a sea of that anyway. But because of that, the company had to make something called a Bluetooth diode, okay? And it's a digital. Almost everything now is no longer analog because it's much too slow a frequency carrier wave. Well, well that, that's the question I want to ask you. You know, because you know they change all the televisions is going from analog to digital. That's right. I think it's next year. You're gonna have to, and if you don't want to switch it from analog to digital, you're gonna have to get a converter box or something like that. That's right. 
and then they make you pay for it too. Right yeah. now they're giving it away. That's also a lot of um, interest behind that too. Mm -hmm. Because when they do that, that's not the reason that they're doing it. They're doing that because all, they want to be able to control all frequencies within your body and all frequencies within the neighborhood and everything else. But analog, they can't do that. Mm -hmm. That will also mean, uh, as I've also told people, again, anyway, you saw that one, this is the one for Bluetooth, the digital. Mm -hmm. When they have their way, this nebulous day, these people who seemingly want to play games with us and look about us being kids, and as I state again, there's no such thing as a, a soul birthing a kid, you birth children. Yeah. Kids means baby goat, to the goat god Baphomet, actually sacrificing you to a lower species at birth, which you're not, especially if you have melanin because it helps you to increase your frequency on everything else you're doing. But because of that, they want control. What happens now, when you use the cell phone, you never turn it off. You say, well, put it up like this, get ready to use it, dial in the number, when they finish with it, they close it, or else they hit the off button and that's it. It didn't go off. It's constantly radiating you, and if you have it in your pocket 24-7, it's radiating you 24-7. When you have a group of people coming together with cell phones, everybody is equally radiating each other. Mm -hmm. That was a convention, rap concert, hip hop, symphony concert, church, school, meetings of Congress, doesn't matter. Because these phones can't be turned off unless you take the battery out. Now pretty soon after next year, even that won't do it. But right now, if you take the battery out of the back, it's not emitting any kind of radiation. So when people say, I just turned off my cell phone, they didn't. At night, when you're charging it up, you're getting radiated along with the TV that's in your room, your radio that's in your room, your hair dryer that may be in your room, every other thing, because all these are emitting low frequency. And low frequency at the very best, using the best adjectives I can, is potentially extremely harmful to the human body and the brain. So because of that, we also had, uh, there's a company, what is called a slim pocket diode. This is the way it looks here. And of course we have a packaging in it again. Looks like a little a square uh, peg of wood, a block of wood that's only about a half a centimeter thick. It's very lightweight, but very protective. You put that one on the left side, one on the right side, and you're setting up now a energy field around your body that is protective. Mm -hmm. Of course, and people have said before, well, Blair, you said you can use one. Yes, you can. If you use one, put it on your left side. You said you can use two. Yes, if you use two, put it on your right side. But then I've heard you say, well, people have six and seven. Yeah, there's people that are smart and are willing to spend the money on helping themselves. You can't put too many of these things on you because of all these towers that are up everywhere, all these electrical and, and magnetic frequencies that are everywhere. You're walking through it each day. So the more you have protection to solidify your own body's electrical field and not have it tap, just like a vampire would tap you, then you're protecting yourself. So you can't put too many on these bodies. Some people I know actually have 12 on them. And those are usually people that have studied this in our group. I usually have about six on me at any time. Or, you know, it's just, anyway, the point is again, when you see something, if you were going to walk into an electrical field, like you have in some of these generating stations, as soon as you get there, because of all the wires and stuff, apprehension waves should run through your head. Uh-oh, what am I getting into? You can hear the hum there. Mm -hmm. You know that you shouldn't be around it too long. That's just six cents, as they would call it. Mm -hmm. Well, if you could hear the hum as you walk down city blocks, as you walk into shopping malls, it would be the same thing. And so for the wise, you try to protect yourself with that one. And what it does is two things. It either closes out your own electrical field, putting up a block for it, or enhances your own field, protected from the other radiation that's coming in. It works the quickest way it can to suggest it. And then, of course, once you understand your body, your brain, your central nervous system, your limbs, your joints, your organs are at risk, then you have to say, well, what about my food? If you think about your food, your food is really, in many cases, radioactive. Not only that, but it's genetically modified in many cases. And that's another story. If you wish in the interview, we can go there too, talk about the risk. But these genetically modified foods are also, in many cases, put in radioactive cans or given x-rays and stuff as the food is there. And so therefore, not only can they be poisonous to the human system, but they also can contain radiation. 
we have what is then called a diode plaque. This is just a picture generally of the diode plaque. You can see the size of it again. What I'm going to do is to also turn it around slowly and you can see it's very thin. And on the back, it's more or less plain except for the seal of the company that makes it. This one you usually put like this on your counter or chopping block or whatever you happen to have and you sit your groceries up on it. There's a picture there of the groceries sitting upon a diode plaque. I usually suggest two diode plaques because then if you have a shopping bag with two of them, you can put every content on there and up to 18 inches above the surface of this plaque, things will take out radiation and nullify poison. So you leave it on there 15 minutes at the least. Sometimes I'll leave it on overnight if it's an imperishable food because again, you can't get too much of a good thing. Mm -hmm. In this case, you can't get too much of a good plaque. You take out poisons and toxins from your food before you eat it and even after you eat it if you, if you want. So that was then a diode plaque. Okay. I don't have, yeah. yeah, I don't have with me a diode pad, but a diode pad is roughly about that long, about that wide, and about that thick, one inch thick. We have them thinner, but I like the one inches at least because I want more of the material within it. That's what you're supposed to sit on. You sit on that when you're sitting in front of a computer. You sit on that when you're sitting in front of a TV set. But mainly, it's for automobiles, trucks, cars, or things that work and roll on wheels. 18 wheelers, I've been talking a lot to some of the drivers and stuff, and individually they bought them. In fact, a brother uh, has helped, you know, with me and sponsored me in here again, Brother Owen. I uh, um, can't think of his brother's name right now. Marv, Marvin Bowen. He is a driver, and many of the drivers, when you go over the hall, over the road, hauling, they're constantly these big rigs, 18 wheels, and they're sitting up in the cabins of these trucks. When they're sitting up in the cab of this truck, you got a CB unit to choose from, you got a cell phone to choose from, you got global display terminals, contacting satellites. All of that is radio action being brought into the metal in that truck or the cabin. What happens is that after a length of time, and this goes with almost anything, once you turn on the ignition, the ignition kicks in the alternator and you start getting radiation because that's a field that's set up by that motor. With all the new side impact laws for automobiles or trucks or anything the government has said, everything must now be a solid weld, which means that all of that metal is welded together without any joints, without any rivets or anything like that. Now, you take that in mind and then remember that the seat that the driver is sitting in and the seat that the passengers may also share is now metal. All that radiation comes from the chassis into that seat and what's sitting on it, your sex organ. The first thing... Well, uh, real quick, uh, I just that that brings me to a question that I had written down. Um, the hybrid cars, could you get going to that too? You know the new hybrid cars that they have out now. Some of them are coming out. Yeah. Right? Now, what's the what's the deal with those cars? Well, before we switch that, let me complete this one real okay, quickly yeah, again. Yeah, the radiation now comes into your body, comes into your sex organ, goes up the spine, goes into your head, and then you got a headset on or you got a Bluetooth stuck in the ear, mm -hmm. or you got some other thing that they call a little cord, a button, where the things, and this is where people think they're safe because now they got this button in the ear, but they got the real unit here. Mm -hmm. Well, if they can hear it, sound travels at 750 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. Light travels 186,000 miles a second. By the time they hear it, they got, they got radiated a thousand times. Just plain physical laws, if any of those laws are here. So I'm simply saying, again, now when you're getting inside of this, pretty soon you're in a Faraday cage. A Faraday cage is anything that has energy all around you of a frequency that can be harmful to you again, can be measured, and yet you're doing nothing about it. So this is why I tell people, at least buy one dial pad for yourself. If you don't, if you don't like your passenger, don't buy anything for them. <laughs> if you've got a family, you need to have that in the back too, because that solid weld now, whether you're in a truck, a rig, or a car, you're getting radiated. And many of the things with men is causing prostate trouble, it's causing all kinds of genital things. It's causing uh, uh, occlusions and growth to get into the veins that are leading to the sex organ. At words, it's bad for the spine. With women, it's called a whole different thing. It works on the mammary gland, but it also works on the sex organ there too, and it dries it out. What it does again, it causes all kinds of harmful things to happen there. In addition to which, it's also working on your sciatic nerve, which runs up from your, uh, your ankles all the way up to the buttocks, 
and pretty soon now that's getting radiated, so your leg starts to draw up. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'm just showing you again, people don't even see that, and I say just purchasing a dial pad can avoid all of that. Now you mentioned on the new cars and things, that's another whole thing too. I've heard that they've got prototype cars running electrical, which they had a long time ago. They had an elect electric car that came out in 47. It's like they had the Tucker car that was working on a rotary engine principle. Mm -hmm. They banned all of that. Told people they shouldn't use it. Bought them off the market. Why? Because they didn't want you to use anything that is not going to run on fossil fuel. And that's another thing that's bad because there's no such thing as fossil fuel simply because it means that all the dinosaurs went to one spot and died and you can tap into their decaying carcasses. This is not fossil fuel. There's nothing fossilized about it. It's a planetary fuel that every time you use it, you're harming your planet. That's another <laughs> physical thing there too. But back to the cars you're talking about, you either have to work on electricity or magnetism. They're not going to release magnetism to the public because they use that in black projects. And that's not black with black people. That means black projects are undercover projects. So they're not going to introduce that. So all you can do is come up with electricity. And if that electricity is low, then you're still in trouble. Because it's the same thing that happens now when you have a battery in your car. Turn on your ignition, kicking in your alternator. It's just that that won't have an alternator unless they have, it might have a resonator in there, but not an alternator, and you're still going to be in trouble. But they don't tell you that either. The only fossil fuel thing there is that carbon that is hydrolyzed and, and put moisture into the air that comes out of your exhaust. And as you know, again, if you have an exhaust and your motor is burning fuel, you put a banana in there, and those just <laughs> well, you put a banana something there, it's going to stop it up. And of course, it's going to make the motor either explode or die out because it's going to stop up the air to mixture. The whole thing is air mixture with it. If the air mixture is refined and good, you can turn it back into the air and you can put a catalytic converter on it to the air and it will not be harmful. They don't tell you that. But if you don't, then you're getting poor carbon being released. And of course, this is always bad because it's something that was original that now is being burned up and you got a residue from it again. So I simply say this. Understanding what I do about the kind of forces that now govern us. And of course, we always say it's our government. I don't know what our government is because it's not for, of, or by the people at this particular time. Then it's a matter of what do you do for self? And what is this government or what is are these officials going to release that's going to be good for you? In most cases, and I'll take a break with you on this one, most cases, most of the things they're releasing and doing are not good for you. But the 1% of things they do that may be good, I see 9% of things that are not. So I simply say again, the hybrid cars and all, I have to wait and see which ones make the sales and which ones they let the public have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, I heard you mention before on ways to activate the right side of the brain. Now, the reason why I ask that is people, people are looking for a lot of the questions I get on the street is, things they can apply like they want to they, they want to apply what they learn so you know everybody wants to tap into their psychic abilities you know so uh, a lot of a lot of the brothers and sisters on the street wanted me to ask you ways they could tap into the right side of their brain to use more of their brain potential but to other brothers and sisters on the street I wish that they'd come to some of my seminars mm -hmm. but buy some of the tapes and I'm sure they will this one or come out to again to invite me to their schools or their churches or places where they congregate and share the wealth. Mm -hmm. Because what I'm doing is to share some wealth now. It's information. Information is worth something. Now, if they are getting information that is worthless, then you don't have to pay for that. Usually that's what you get every time you open up a newspaper mm -hmm. or turn on most of the radio stations. So without being mercenary, let me just simply say, I've been teaching how to do that for years. I have special courses that I teach, I have workshops that I teach, how to see the human aura, how to tune to your, uh, your higher wavelengths, uh, working with energy fields, all these are things that I've developed over time. Like anybody else that makes something, I made this, I make it up, and there are people that come to me for it. Now past all of that, I will simply give one little hint as to one way that you can begin to do that. Everything that we do on this planet is of a low frequency. Why? Because our controllers made it that way. Everything that we want is on a high frequency. That's why when people begin to quicken, as they say, when they begin to speed up, when they begin to operate faster, things of a higher level operate fast. Things of a lower level work away or operate usually slow. So it simply means you're quickening your energy field 
and everything that your energy field goes through, which is your glands, your organs, your hormones, your body tissues, whatever it is. If it's quickened, it will operate better. Same thing with the brain. You have to do things to speed up the ability of those cells, those neurons, and those dendrites, and those axions to function faster. Easy to do with one thing, monatomic gold. There are other ways too, but I'm going to just give this hint out. There are methodologies even when you take the gold, but monatomic gold alone, when taken in the system on a regular basis, as long as you prohibit the use of these things that would slow it down, like drugs, like alcohol, like booze, like any other thing that's going to slow you down, like pharmaceutical drugs, most of them, 98% of them, are going to slow you down. Now, if you take it with the gold, you're wasting your time with the gold. Because the gold now is going to do one thing, try to nullify all the other bad things that you have in there, rather than building you up to a higher potential. So I say, first of all, don't even waste the money if you're going to continue to do those things. But I probably just lost half the audience. I don't care because they don't need the gold because they're misusing the gold. When you begin to take it and you're spiritual, and you want to set up a good body defense, you want to set up a good immune system, you want to speed up that brain activity, you take the monatomic gold. Monatomic gold means mono. People are understanding now that liquids are even more easily absorbed in the human system than our solids. You say, well, so what? I knew that. Wonderful. But how many people know that there are three different forms of liquids? There is your colloidal, which is what you get in most liquids that you take. There is ionic, and everything we sell of liquids on our website is ionic. Even the monotone, uh, what do we call the Miracle 2000, the Heart Miracle, it's ionic, which means it's more easily it's absorbed than even colloidal, because it's smaller. Smaller than both uh, colloidal and ionic is monotonic. And if you had some of the powder that we have, or if you had the liquid, of course, to start, if you had the powder, you hold up this high, it would never hit the ground, it just disperse. But it's very easily absorbed into the body, through the glands, and through the organs, and through the throat, and in using that, you now are raising your potential of your blood to 121 megahertz. Mm -hmm. 121 megahertz simply means this. If you could stay operating at 121 megahertz, you'd be a super person. Superman, super girl, super boy, super child, whatever. You'd be super because you'd be rating at a height of speed that no bacteria, no germ could even exist in. First of all, you'd be germ and bacteria free. But because we usually cannot maintain it, we have to renew it each day. But each time we do, if you're trying to get in a pure diet, you begin to raise your own blood vibrations up and up and up. Most people can't get past 100. Bacteria and all can't get past 100. So if you have 101, 102, you're bacteria and germ free. So that's the difference in using one method for speeding up the use of the brain. Take monatomic gold, goes up to the hypothalamus where your pituitary pineal gland are in, helps to work again to the left brain, right brain, helps to get right and left brain entrainment, which means that they both work empathetically, sympathetically, and when any time you need to go higher, it automatically switches over. So that's the thing in using what we would call gold versus some of the other things that you wouldn't have. And then methodologies of study and meditation, that is what I teach. And this is where, again, in that methodology, you can begin to transfer that energy yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I want to jump around a little bit. We've got a lot of different questions here from different people. Um, one thing. Um, seems to be a popular question where do we come from now when you say black history oftentimes people go as far as back to Kemet then they stop at Kemet some people go to slavery and stop at slavery what is our history before we before we got down here to, to earth do I'm sure we have a God I mean you hear brothers on the street every day say yeah the black man is God the black man is God what does that mean to you to say that you're God and you're more than just the physical shell, Delbert Blair? Well, Brother Rich, you are more than a physical shell, Rich Merritt. The whole point is that when you think you are something, you are. But sometimes we don't even give thought to what we think. That's what they call locomotor. Things done without dignity. Things done that are just being done because, like your heart beats. Because if you took time to forget your heart to beat, you might be dead. So some things are done automatically, automatically. 
in the case then of you getting to uh, say, well, where did the black man come from and why the black man had this and not had that? At one time on earth, there were nothing but black people, but not for the reason that it's very proud and say that, but the reason mm -hmm. for that. At one time, the earth was so messed up through a radiation war that the only people that could survive had to have their skin turned jet black. Mm -hmm. Hair who wouldn't even grow because the whole body was being charred. And because of melanin, which is a gift from the Creator, one of the biggest gifts and best gifts you can ever get in a physical life, their body had adapted, stopping all that radiation at the skin surface, and so therefore they had to be black to live on the surface. Their lives were shortened. They could not get longevity in a radiation field unless you can control it because it shortens everything you're doing, cuts down your, your livability time. But at that time, after that great war and that great conflagration, that's the only thing to live on the surface. No, what, original. What, what, what great war are you referring to? Well, this was an altercation that most people aren't even aware of. A time when there was a big battle between the moon and our planet, when there was an interplanetary war, <laughs> and many things. This is an old, 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 old planet. Mm -hmm. We're talking billions of years old. Mm -hmm. The scientists and geneticists now, and I think the anthropologists give it about 4.5 billion, or moon 5.6 billion, which lets you know that the moon rock is supposed to be older than the Earth, for those who think that the moon came from the Earth, but even they are wrong. In metaphysical study, and that means simply the books and the literature and the word of mouth is passed on from generation to generation, they say this planet was so old that it's almost unbelievable. But what is more current now is the planet is finally getting a chance to get out from underneath the psychological barrier and block. So, and back to your basic question, I would simply say that melanin, which makes people and things dark, because there's melanin and chlorophyll in plants, there's only one magnesium molecule difference between human hemoglobin and plant chlorophyll. So the easiest way to help yourself is to eat green plants, and especially those that are not full of radioactivity and so like that. It simply means also that there is something that's been given to people on Earth, to creatures on Earth, and in this case to people who have an active melanin, which we now collect as a race. Black is not a race, white is not a race, yellow is not a race, and brown is not a race. And there are other races that have other codes than that too. We just haven't met them in general. So what you're talking about is people with melanin and the gift of melanin versus those who have very little. And there's seven grades of melanin. Without getting into all the grades of melanin, the higher the, the number, the greatest number, the stronger. And therefore, if you have a grade 7 melanin, you can adapt that melanin to almost everything you want to do. And it's in everything, including the brain cells, which then work even better. They talk about gray matter. It's not gray matter. It's actually black matter up in the brain in some cases. It's gray when it kind of mixes. Everywhere melanin is, the creator is also. Simply meaning this because it is like something that must come from what was nothing or something that came from creation. You know, we say the Creator is everywhere. Now what are they beginning to find? Some of these astrophysicists and so on, geologists, they're finding dark matter. Well, the dark matter was already there, but our planet was so low in frequency, we couldn't even recognize it. Dark matter is just that. It is melanated matter. They're even finding black holes. Mm -hmm. And they're now postulating that everything that's brought into a black hole just absorbs. It is no more. There is nothing as no more, because the Creator always is. So therefore, you can't have nothing anymore. Hope I confuse you with that one. When you draw things into a black hole, you're simply drawing it back to the original source. It's reconverted and set out at a different frequency. It comes out, but because of our low frequency, we can't see when it's re-emitted. So these scientists are saying, well, it's here, it's just, it's just, no. <laughs> it's not. It's coming on a frequency you can't behold, which will be by the before this thing, before this, uh, uh, this interview ends with you, Brother Rich. I'd like to kind of get into that to remind me. I'd like to close with that one though, about our son. Mm -hmm. But either way, for now, the black race of people were the only race of people that had to be turned black that could live on the surface of our planet. As you understand now, the lighter you are, the more you cannot live on the surface you're exposed to sunlight without harmful radiation, melanomas, carcinomas, and everything else. It's still the same law. In order to take the rays of the sun, absorb them and not let them harm you, you have to have melanin. This is a co uh, collector, a nullifier, a cancellator, whichever one you would. So when you're talking about now the races of man, you're talking about one thing. When you're talking about the races of human, you're talking about another thing. When you're talking about mankind, you're talking about another thing. It's just like the interposition of kid for child. And great teachers and 
people who are very smart still go around and use that stupid word kid. You don't have kids. Just like you don't have a master if you're part of the gods. If you're part of Godhead, you are God. But it's a matter of how intelligent the gods you are, how ignorant the gods you are. In summation, there have been races on the earth that have been green. There have been races on the earth that have been red. There are races on the earth that have been brown. And the races on the earth that have been black. Each one of those is a grade of melanin. The only one that does not have melanin would be completely white. And that's when albino, when all the red blood cells are now dissipated, vitiligo is set in or whichever again, it means that they carry very little of the melanin aspect, which means that they're very hard to be spiritual, simply because they don't have the direct connection with the Creator. The battle that was fought here between the moon and people on earth, debatable, but I believe it. I've read enough of the literature and uh, to see that. I look at the moon, in which many people are saying now, uh, these again, these astrophysicists, these geologists and these interplanetarians, and that's what I call them, that are now collecting these things to study them, all are saying now, if we can believe anything they tell us, that the moon rock is 5.6, the earth 4.5, which means, as the ancient uh, Native Americans have said, and some of the Dogons and Tuaregs and Chiluk people have already said, there was a time when we didn't even have a moon at all. So if you want, we can go into that part too, but up until that time, you have to simply say, black people came about living on the surface of earth, because they're the only ones that can survive and be any way human and intelligent by doing so. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned the Dogon. Could you tell me something about Sirius? Because uh, the Dogon say we come from Sirius star system, right? Well, that's what I've heard. Uh -huh. now, what, now, what's that about, the whole Sirius constellation? Well, the Dogons are very interesting. The Dogons, again, if you read their history, like some of the pygmies and so, say that they came from the area of the Salton Sea, which is now called the Mediterranean. They say that there was a great battle that was fought up there. That's one of the last kind of conflicts that we've had here in the earth, on that part of our earth uh, there in what we call Kemet now, or what they call Africa now. After that battle was fought, they had to leave. They left because deserts were formed. At one time, that part of Africa, Kemet, El Kibu land, you know, Kim, whatever you want to call her again, uh, had no deserts. Those were fertile plains, very vibrant, forest and verdant, streams that ran to the Nile. This is where they first built the pyramid, and that's another structure. That, in fact, you will find that the Sphinx again is even older than the pyramid. But when they built the pyramid there again, they misused that. And so they had to flee, because what has happened was, with this ray that they use, and this energy they use, it actually caused the soil, which was black, full of life, verdancy, seeds, and everything else that could grow, they killed it, they blasted it, and it created deserts. Deserts are sand. Sand means that you've had something that had life that now is dead. And when that sand was created, it's through radiation. You still find that most of the deserts, whether it's the Kalahari, whether it be a Sahara, people have even forgotten about the Libyan desert. Because when I had, was teaching school, I used to ask my students, they say, on what desert is the Great Pyramid of Giza built? And of course, the response came in, of course, it's error. That's intelligent. Mm -hmm. No, it's not intelligent. It means a limited understanding of history. It was built on the Libyan desert. But that desert has enroached, meaning it has grown. And now it's just one big desert because of the radiation and the poisons and toxins that were released there. It's one of the penalties of the black man who were responsible for that. Let's get back to your original question. The Dogons then, went all the way down there to the Cape, what they call it now the Cape, that's not what they call it then, and they had settlements there. But you will also find that the Shiduks and the Tuaregs always tell you the same thing too. But the Dogons then said that they were taught by a, a teacher by the name of Oenus. And Oenus, the fish god, came and helped them when they got that near the ocean because they said they could not survive in those caves that were there unless they understood. They knew what they'd run from but they didn't know what they were running to. Off of that, they began to understand, as they'd always been told by their ancestors, that they were not of Earth, but had come to Earth. And it was said that the women were brought later, after the men were there, in what was called the Merkaba. And they actually called it the Merkaba van. Merkaba van. That's where you get our word van, and connect with the word Merkaba. Merkaba of Allah. They also stated that a companion to this area where Owenus came from were other stars and that those stars had planets and that they were going back when they died or when their souls left the earth 
two Canis Major and Canis Minor, the Dog Stars, the Dog Consternation. Mm -hmm. Canis Major, Canis Minor, which is referred to as the Dog Stars. Of course, most of the brothers now are hip to Sirius, and this is where they step in and say, well, Sirius A, Sirius B, there's Sirius C and Sirius D. Remember, I said this to you. Mm -hmm. Okay? But all that means it is not just a binary star system, but on rare occasions you can even get a trinary star system. And all planets and all suns don't have to show light. It's another thing that has to be understood. Because where darkness is, melanin exists, but it may be on a frequency that you can't understand. Not meaning you, but people in general. So that's the story that I understand that they tell, and they understood that if they could make amends with themselves, their souls would go back after this incarnation, back to Sirius or the Dog Star, where things were a little bit better. It's not perfection there either, but at least it's much better than what Earth has, because Earth took on the laggards, and that's another little story. When you say laggards, what's, what is that? <laughs> I figured you would. <laughs> you got a revealing tape here, much more than I usually give. I usually try to segment into one subject for that reason. But in this case, I agreed to do it, so I will do it. The laggards were misfits, disenfranchised, nobody wanted creatures that lived on many uh, planets within this particular system, within this galaxy, and there are many galaxies. Not universe now, I did not say universe, I said galaxy. And it was decreed that this planet, like 20, 21 other ones, or 22 in fact, was to be like a, a, I can't call it a zoo, like a hotel with many complexes. It allowed different creatures to come together on one planet. That's why on this planet you have all kind of animals, birds, fish, people. You have hot, dry, deserts, snow, waterfalls, salt water, fresh water. Everything here is like a habitat, a perfect habitat for almost anything that wishes to come here. The one prerequisite was that they were supposed to try to learn under a certain time span and then they could move on. Well, some of them there, uh, they, 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 they never got cured, they never they were recidivists. In this case, they brought in, since they had great teachers here, and a wonderful, beautiful planet. This planet is beautiful if you've traveled on it at all. I've had limited travel, but I see it's beautiful. They came here to learn and to be re-educated and to be taught or to be confined until they could change their ways. Well, what happened was the great teachers here thought that with all the kind of things going on here that they could do something with it, but they found that some of the laggards were incorrigible, and instead of them coming here to learn, they killed the teachers and began to teach themselves. So we got a big problem here, and those are what it called to it, the time of the return of the laggards or the bringing forth of the laggards. Mm -hmm. The white race, or oh, I don't know if you want to refer to them as a race, um, David Icke, other people as well, talk about reptilian shape shape shifting. Blue eye, blonde hair, Queen Elizabeth, George Bush, they have the ability to shape. Now that theory is mainly specula specu speculated upon in the white conspiracy theorist community. In the black community, we feel as though they 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 they, they can't shape shift. They don't come from nowhere but the caves. There's nothing spiritual about them. They wish they could shape shift, but uh, they have no spiritual essence to them. How do you weigh in on the whole shape shifting reptilian uh, debate that's uh, circulating, whether it exists or not? Well, my three cents that I'll throw in is that there are shapeshifters. There have been shapeshifters on this planet since the time was organized. And even when we go to the fifth dimension, which I want to end on with the sun thing, there'll still be shapeshifters. Now, what is a shapeshifter? How does a shapeshifter shapeshift? And if they don't exist, why do people ignorantly believe that they're shapeshifters? You shapeshift every night. Every night we go to sleep. And nobody questions where do we go. I've often asked, do you punch a ticket? Do you have a transfer? What vehicle do you use? How much fuel does it take? And where do you go? Everybody on earth that has a soul sleeps. Unless you're very refined, and even then you may sleep at least once a month. Sleep really means that your body can no longer hold the soul 
because it's run out of energy. And the body becomes so despicably horrible to the soul that until it cleans up itself, the soul leaves. So each night you die. You will die every three days or you will die standing up. People go to sleep standing up. Mm -hmm. People had guard duty, just go and sleep. Uh, they'll, they'll be with you, you know, they're still there. But you have to go to sleep because the energy in your body is not strong enough to maintain you. Mm. So you have to get out so the body can renew itself. You, as a soul, go out and receive some energy, jump back into the body, and then you go. Mm. Now, if that is the case, then you have to ask, what trip did you take? Where did you go? What is the action? And what is the reaction? That is another whole case of study. But I see him say, each night we die. So death is only death when it's final, for what we think is final. When we die each night, we're going to be reborn. If not, then you got obsequies, funerals, and everybody's mourning. If you do, hey, you made it back. But sometimes we get back with trace memories. We have a dream. I said, oh, I had a REM state, and a rapid eye movement state, and I dreamed this and I dreamed this. It seems so real. It was real. Because you got out of the false reality, which doesn't exist on this planet, to the real reality that does off this planet where you came from. That's why many people don't like to return. Many people get lost out in space and consciousness. This is why when you start talking about the speed of something, it's incalculable the speed of something on a planet like this because this planet is so low in vibration. Speed of light, speed of sound, no such thing. It doesn't exist in the internal world that is external to the Creator. Only exists then. When you're next to the Creator, there is no such thing as time. So for a soul, there's no time. But time it must remember when it comes back into the body, and that's when you say, I don't know how long I was asleep. I don't know where I went. Man, it was so real was there, because she really became real. Here is a confinement. Here is where you're here to do one thing, learn. And then the time is to show what you've learned and what you're willing to practice. So encapsulating it back to the original question. When David Icke and So are talking about people with souls and people without souls and shapeshifters and all, he's telling you the truth. There is a soulless wonder and there is souls. In many cases, the shapeshifters don't have souls. I usually classify them into womb-born versus egg-borns. All womb-borns have souls. They gestate trimester into a female mammary, in this particular case, a mammal, and then they're born at the time when they reach the frequency where they can now become physical. But they were still existing. And if you notice in the first trimester with some people, they even it looked like a tadpole. Shows you yeah, that reptile yeah, organ. Yeah. I'm talking truth. I don't talk lies. And I don't talk about stuff I don't understand. Many people go up half cocked. They haven't spent enough study. That's why I tell you I'm not a master. And neither are the ones that tell you they're masters. Because masters will not talk to you like this. Mm -hmm. We're students. You're a student. Whatever grade we're in is the grade of consciousness that we choose to be in. Back to the original point. There are shapeshifters, from my perspective. They operate from the fourth dimension into the third dimension. Our planet and all on this planet are presently in the third dimension. And in so doing, they are not reaching down and they're manipulating you. Like a laboratory science with a guinea pig or some other form of creature he feels or she feels is lower than them. And they do whatever they want to do. This is why they've been doing that. The catch is that if you have a soul, even though you are now on that dimension, you have no dimension that can bind you for long, only in a state of death or sleep do you need to transform. That's why when yogams, rishi men, uh, or sh sh what, different, whatever you want to call the magician or the shaman, they can go into a state by which they feel no pain. Because they really take the soul away from the body, mm -hmm. stay in that dimension, and the wiring is disconnected even though the wiring is there. So they don't feel anything there. Mm -hmm. You feel this because you're now earthbound, you believe it, it's been incorporated into you, and so therefore you're part of that physical thing. But each time you leave, when you go to sleep, if you don't wake up, you don't know what's happening to your body. Which lets you know that the connection is what you have to make. And when all the wiring is back in and you settle it all in, you're now physical and completely awake. There are shapeshifters, there are walk-ins, there are walk-outs, and there are souls and there are soulless. That's my criteria. That's what I'm basing my consciousness on. What is the difference between the spirit and the soul? You don't play, do you? <laughs> Man, I didn't think I'd ever put this on in one take for one person. But I'm being made to do so, not you making me, and telling me to do so, so I put it on. This take must be going to go to a lot of people. In my limited understanding, with the study that I do as a soul person in a physical body, very human at this time, 
the idea of a spirit is that a spirit is um, a idea whose time has come to a physical place. The soul is a vehicle of transportation for that spirit. The spirit is then the vehicle of transportation for the body and all are controlled by mind. In many cases we use the term mind meaning brain. Mm. The mind is to the spirit and soul as the brain is to the body. I'll repeat that one more time. Mm -hmm. The mind is to the spirit and soul as the brain is to the body. A vehicle which lets you wire in all these things and let it function on a frequency because everything must have an energy source. Rather than burn out the soul by going directly to that, that soul is then built to pull in the universal soul, which in this case is the sun. That's why they would tell you there's nothing new under a sun. Mm -hmm. So once you come under sun jurisdiction and are born there, you must have an energy source, which is the sun, and your soul, Saul, again, like they had their parable and allegory of Solomon, which means soul man or sun man. They're one and the same. Enough souls together form a sun. Individual souls are individual man here to learn. If you remember again that Solomon said, just to digress a bit, Vanity, vanity, all I see is vanity. Before, because, you know, he understood then that on this plane, everything is desire. On the plane where he came from and remembered, everything was will. And I always say willpower meet miss desire. Desire moves inward. Takes in things because you desire, mm -hmm. you covet them. Mm -hmm. Will moves outward. You command them, you demand them, and you are part of them because you understand the will that is from the Creator with the desire that is from God and from lower creatures and things. So, so it's, like a, it's like a marriage. It's like one goes out, one comes back. A symbiotic relationship, simply meaning everybody benefits from it mm -hmm. and everybody's supposed to learn from it. In many cases we no longer benefit. In many cases we're incapable of learning because of the drugs we take and the poor teachers that we have. Incapability mm -hmm. is something that can change to capability. But you must put the will to do so. Like you see, others don't see, you'll get, they won't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you have the man, you have the woman. From what I understand, in the spirit realm, we are one. We're androgynous. We have both aspects within us. When we come down to the physical, we separate. And, uh, and during the course of our lifetime, we spend our life trying to find the other side of you. Man primarily being electric, woman primarily being magnetic. Together, I guess, we're electromagnetic. We complete. You know, we're complete. We're that one that we once used to be before we came down here to the physical. What we see now happen is a society... Um, Large and then I'm out there. You, you you came by my spot yesterday in Brooklyn. I'm on the street. I have the, the DVDs. Um, large increase in homosexuality within the uh, black community. Uh, young sisters as young as 13 I see are outside every day. Dr. Blair holding hands with other females. They have their uh, you know their their flag on the gay flag. Young brothers switching. On TV now, you have transgenders on uh, Puffy. Uh, this dude, I don't know, have you ever heard of uh, Sean Puffy Combs? Yeah, he has a, you know, a celebrity. He has a new show out. I want to work for Diddy. Transgender on his show. Next uh, next season of America's Next Top Model. Uh, big show on television. Big show. Transgender on that show. What's going on with that, uh, Dr. Blair? Is that because... Uh, it's the end of this particular paradigm, and that's what happens at the end of paradigms? That's what? Mm -hmm. One reason. If you notice, when you study limitedly, and again, his story as he teaches it, which you have to be very careful of, anytime a civilization falls, you will get, again, a lot of uh, rampant sexuality, asexuality, bestiality, all of these things go rampant. Because it's now the soul who is unprogressive now getting a chance to reveal just how much progress he or she has not made. Heterosexuality means to have self-love. But you say, well, heterosexuality is when I have another partner. Not so. People talk about souls, twin souls, and soulmates. To have a soulmate is to be blessed because there is no difference, except one is in a female body and one is in a male body. 
that has been on heter heterosexual laws. By the way, I am not homosexual, I am very heterosexual. But I talk now as a scientist and a researcher of metaphysics, wherever the two play, go. In many cases, transgenderism and like transvestitism, and so on again, are deviations from the mind when the brain is not sure of what it's about. Fear induces things to, to retaliate against. Helpfulness and non-fear that you be comfortable with what you are and seek to understand why it works as it does. I simply will state this in summation, and it's much too big a topic to close this quickly, but it could lead into a lot of thoughts and a lot of debates and so on like that. If a soul has had a good mating at one time on a planet like Earth, understand, third grade frequency, third dimension, and falls in love, and then one part soul devours and goes and dies, that mate is then gone, and then they're left there, where's my mate? Sometimes the sorrow is so hardful that the person wants to die. On souls, it means that anybody can mate. Mating is done every day. Twin souls mean that there's a lot in common. Soul mates mean that if they are one. In fact, they found the other self, but only expressed in a different kind of body, which lets them even enjoy each other more. But if that soul gets out of kilter, and that mate has gone on, and then it is reborn, and the other mate still looking for the soul it didn't have, but back here not knowing where to look, especially now, again, as the world is becoming smaller, still searching for something inside that is no longer inside because the person that they thought that they were with is now gone. So therefore, that other person now incarnates back. But maybe both of them now have incarnated into male bodies. Both of them have incarnated into female bodies. But the bond is still there mentally. The bond is still there in the soul force, and they recognize that person in another body. Now, before, say they were heterosexual, but now one is a man and another is a man, one is a lesbian or a woman and another is a woman, and now they still feel that attraction. In many cases, when you do drugs, you can misinterpret that attraction, because under the influence of a drug, the animal nature is brought out, the spiritual nature is suppressed, and so therefore, they're now attracted to each other there, but without the guidance of doing it without blues and liquor, they now would not even mate, even then. So now you're finding a free soul in a planet that is now quickening, that is now able to express it as they see it. And so therefore they search for their opposites in any sex, in any body that it's in. Mm. That also can be done through genes and hormones. There can be things that are applied at birth to these children in hospitals, that's why I, I guard women all the time having these children born in some of these hospitals where they give them seven shots. Some of these shots messes up the brain, messes up the kind of hormones that are being secreted, and will have you loving anything you want. Many cases, again, it was, it's been okay now, so consequently, they feel that this is cool. This is all right. It's not even a matter of right and wrong anymore. The wrong is when you force on another person to comply with what you are. The right is when you do it freely, and therefore nobody's forcing you to do it. Many of these people are souls searching for souls. Many of these people are drug influenced. Many of these people are encrypted. And all these things go together at this time. It will straighten itself out. Because if you notice again, it used to be in the past, those that were very messed up sexually became so ravishing and horrible that they caught at war. Those that had afflictions, Napoleon, a couple of others, they would begin to be homosexuals only because they wanted to inflict pain, simply meaning that not do you inflict pain if you're homosexual, they lashed out at the world mentally, and it became a physical debarkation into what we call wars. It's a very complex situation, but I gave you four different examples of how it can come about. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Um, yesterday, while we was outside, the brother Rashid, um, A.A. Rashid, big ups to him, he uh, asked you about the Moorish Mars connection. Now, I mean, for, for years and years since I was a little kid, I mean, this TV and this white boy, he's been infatuated with Mars. Is there life on Mars? Is there life on Mars? We're going to try to go to Mars. They got the rover out there. They got this. They said they found a face in Mars. What's going on in Mars? Are, are there civilizations that exist in Mars? And can he go out there? Or can we go out there? Under a sun. All planets are hollow, or else they could not have a sun. Under a moon, they better be hollow. 
because without that, if you had a solid and a hollow, you'd have pricing and stuff like this. Each planet is a classroom. There are actually 13 classrooms in this cycle at one time. The term Triskaidekaphobia, the fear of the number 13, comes from the sole recollection of a planet, Maldek and Maluna, that destroyed themselves. And that fear is carried on. Any planet that's hollow, any life form that's advanced, will live inside, not on the outside. You're limited, and you have to do the age, what is called EXT, E-X-D, and age transmutes to a person, or translates to a person who lives on the surface, because you're exposed to too much radiation, the planetary radiation plus the sun radiation plus the moon radiation, and you will die. You cannot have longevity on the surface of a planet in a physical body. But if you go inside a planet, the atmosphere inside is more cloaking, much more magnetic, which leads to longer life. People get taller and so on like this under a magnetic field. In summation, living on the surface is almost condemned to death, and the disease of age takes place. The cells will wear out because there's too much harmful things there going for them to maintain and grow stronger and longer. Inside, giants can live because now instead of your life force being taken away, you're cloaked in magnetic field, which leads to stronger growth, leads to longevity, which leads to better uses of everything you have. Because we're all individuals in bodies learning. On the surface, age takes place. So, I say all that to say, if you're looking for intelligent life forms, you look inside the planet, not on the surface. The intelligent ones have had wisdom enough to go inside and become wise, live long enough to have more wisdom and exuberate that inside. On the surface, it's a temporary thing, that's what it's supposed to be while you're here to learn, and then you decide what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. On Mars, there are melanated people living inside of, Earth, of that Martian atmosphere. The movies have tried to show that when you had some of the honest producers, uh, the people who wanted to tell you a story and tell it in the cloak form, like the Spielberg and Lucas and their series, they would tell you again in their own way that they're inner Earth beings, exterior Earth beings, and astral beings. Either of these is a way to live, but it's on a different dimension, you know, it's on a different vibrational rate, the same third dimension. So, inside of Mars are said to be black people. I use that collectively because there's no such thing as a black race. Melanated people, they look a certain way. And the best way I can describe how they look would be what we call the Olmecian statues that you see everywhere. That's what they were taken from. They were from the people that came by, from Sirius by way of Mars that came here. In many cases, those were the Martians. That's why they're now trying to hide that fact. That's why they don't want to show you that the face on Mars is of a Negroid-looking woman. I have to use Negroid, who are going, you know, Caucasoid, uh, Andropoid, uh, Mongoloid, all this kind of thing. But it's of a black woman and with dreads. Mm. You can't be more descriptive than that. What they don't like to tell you, there was a, um, a post office that was there on one of the islands they invaded and it had Our Lady of the Pyrenees and Our Lady of the Islands. The Lady of the Island stamp was of a Negroid woman with dreads and it showed one of the goddesses of ancient time. Now the Greeks gave us that word goddesses uh, so I'm just going to use that for the term that we best understand. And it showed this Negroid woman as being uh, from Mars. It showed her as a planetary beautiful woman. In other words, could bring forth many races from her. What that was saying was that out of melanin, many things can come. And they invaded that island. They tore up all the stamps. They wanted to get rid of their lady of our islands there again. But if she would take a solenoid reprint and put that over the face on Mars, she would come to life. Mm -hmm. It shows the same thing there, that the Martians had come here, that the Martians who were the and or who were the android, who were the Olmecs, were here to teach in time and then at the time they left. They left after having a great battle, a great conflict, and I won't go into that. It takes too much more time. But they had a great battle that was fought here when the, when the Olmecans tried to defend against the Dracon and Dracon robots that came back here. They lost that battle simply because they refused to let any more souls have to be, ex, you know, to be expired through that daggone process. But they also left us with the same thing that could get to where they are. Melanin, pyramids, crystals, and magnets. With that, if we awaken, we can use the same thing to do what they did. They did it, and then they had to take away the crystal, the all-seeing eye of the pyramid. It took away all of the grand gallery, that whole thing that made that thing become a, a ray machine and a transporting machine. We see semblances of what was. 
that we know within our hearts what is. Let's touch on reincarnation. Um, do we choose to come back here or do we have to come back here to learn a lesson? A quarter, a third, what you choose. Mm -hmm. A third, which what you have also done. And a third, when by the dispensating consciousness at that time, is what you need. People say, if I just follow my first mind. If we follow our first mind and our last mind, none of us would mind. Using quicker diameter, you know. We are what we think, eat, and drink on the physical plane. We are what we think on the mental plane. We are on all planes. We can no longer cease to exist once we have become part of the universal soul, then anything can cease to exist no matter how much you smash it or tear it up. It's still going back to what it was in the first place, pure mind. When we understand that death is only a state of consciousness in which we die, but the state of totality can never die, then we understand where God's experiencing a little bit of a change in environment because we needed to, because we wanted to know more when we understood everything. The more you specifically try to learn one thing, you're channeling yourself into one directive. That's a dangerous thing. Because we're all comprehensive, we should always be trying to understand by expanding what we already have, rather than getting one little facet and concentrating upon it. This is what's happened here. We're concentrating one little facet of existence. A third dimensional planet got so transfixed by it that we let those who we should be teaching teach us, taught us to use bodies, jump into them, forget where we came from and who we are. There is now the problem. So, how we, so, all right. How exactly did we lose knowledge of who we are? Because we went to false teachers, we went to God and religion, and began to be retold a story that we used to tell to them. Therefore, that that we helped create became our masters. Mm. Okay. Let me. Uh... All right. Now I hear a lot of a lot of people speak about you know we we uh every day on the news you hear about this this uh, war in Iraq. The Middle East, uh, whatever, whatever. A lot of people say that there's a Stargate in Iraq. Do you have any information uh, on that? There are many who go with the concept that the names that we use now are not their names that we used before, and I agree with that because language has changed, dominance changes, and the people make the language of whoever rules. Who has the ruler sets the rules. Mesopotamia one Sumer. Underneath Iraq, Iran, you got the old Persian Empire and the Ottoman Empire still fighting back again. You have the Ptolemies fighting again. Uh, this other guy, I forget his name. That's a story that's been played out so long we should be tired of it. But because we have not learned, and because nothing new under a sun exists, and our sun is now becoming bifold, we must now go through that again. You must be able to remember what you forgot in order not to forget to remember again. <laughs> Follow me. I'm trying. All right. <laughs> Once you do that, then you think, this is it. This is never happened before. This is Iran. This is Iraq. This is America. This is Europe. So on so forth again. Lies. There are no titles and names. The names change with the frequency of the brain. And we live the same dream, the same nightmare in many cases, until we learn to undo it. The same battles that were fought by the Ottoman Empire, the Persian Empire, the Sumerian Empire, Mesopotamia one, Mesopotamia two, Mesopotamia three. Back again, souls, doing the same stupid thing all over again. I say it's stupid, and I should not use that because that's judgmental. I think it's a waste of time to do it. But what happened was, people are saying and bringing back ancestors. Ancestors will not return to you if they're in the higher heavens. Not even for you, because they've learned their lessons about physical reality, which is a conundrum. It is no such thing as physical reality. It's the lowest form of reality you can come from. And every time they got to stoop down and do that, they're lowering their vibrations rather than that you raise yours. And the are saying, and so to get their attention, they already know you're here. And those that don't know you're here, you don't want them anyway. Now let me explain that. Many souls left bodies quickly in battle. Wherever you have great battles fought, there's hauntings that go on. Because the souls are taken out of the physical body like that, 
the spirit doesn't know what to do. The soul can't reclaim its consciousness with the sun, and so therefore it walks, forgetting that time is non-dimensional forever on that space because it doesn't know what happened. Every time you relive that in your consciousness, you're contacting them in the highest plane and giving them the courage and energy to relive it. Let them move on. Other than that, because of this draconic influence, that battle will be fought over and over and over again because that's what the draconic reptiles want. Because if you get past that, you'll go to the fourth dimension, up to the twelfth dimension. Only seven dimensions in this part, but there seem to be infinite dimensions otherwise. And you're still caught up there. They can feed off of you, literally and figuratively, off of your blood empire like a, your blood, like a, empire, like a, a vampire, or physically misuse you as they do because you're allowing that. Progressed souls go through this incarnation and then they learn that was a mistake. A mistake because they needed to know. Once you need to know, why do you have to keep reliving it? It is the draconic influence that causes us to relive these things, changes our minds, make us forget, and we still live the same battles. Just to make that even more direct rather than figuratively. It is my understanding, I mean, it is it may be, that from roughly about 67 to 89, uh, what they want to call uh, indigo babies and souls were being born. The indigo children were those that had been killed, maimed, horribly slaughtered in wars. They were anxious to come back and get it on to do something about it. They came back to fight or flight. Flight meant they would take somebody else out with them or they are going to fight. They came back to get it off. What did they do? The draconic souls who operate on a higher frequency in the main, the fourth dimension, knew this was going to happen. So they set traps for those souls. And when they came in and they knew they were here to fight them, they made them think they were supposed to fight an enemy over in Vietnam, an enemy over in Korea, an enemy in the Persian Gulf. Give them false analogies as to reasons for that to happen. And then they went off and they did what they wanted to do, fight. But they did not fight their enemy. They fight somebody that their enemy told them to go fight. Never realizing the mistake they'd made. And then, and I know people, a lot of the hip hop, hip -hop guys are going to get pissed at this, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, you know, they even fought the air. You're talking back. Sure, when you have venom and unqualified channel energy to release, you do it that way. But what are you doing? You're fighting the spirits of the air around you, the sylphs. You're fighting your own inner consciousness. You're fighting your own animal instinct and the animal brain that they put these on these bodies. What are you fighting? Why are you so angry? Directed anger can be much better used than through physical uses of it. That's what you call focused thought, whether it be for good or bad, it still works. But that way, they then put them in uniforms, told them they are all one, go fight a common enemy. The enemy was unseen, but they gave you a mortal enemy to fight. Now, that's past now. Because you see, you had those from those other empires being born into different bodies, and they had to told the same thing. So then they had you fighting each other, like children under reptilian control, and that's what we were. Now, you're having crystals being born. Whole different ball game now. The planet is going to higher frequency. So now these crystals can come in. They weren't fixing to come back in then because they're advanced souls. Now with these crystals, they're born with eyes wide open, with spines erect, they're born with knowledge and understanding and wisdom. They can work with animals and insects. They can work with vibrations of the air. They can work with fire, water, all the elements. And they can even work with the mothers while in the womb and the fathers out of the womb. They are a very advanced type of people. They're not here with hate. They're here to understand what makes for hate and how to change it to love. These are the children that now will be given the energies and powers that we say we want but don't qualify for by our very actions. What are they doing to them? Try to give them seven shots at birth, including hepatitis C. Try to give them booster shots. Give them all the farming, pharmaceutical P H A R M. Okay, seven thousand um, pharmaceutical things in Merck's index, United States Defense Area of Pharmaceutical Medicine. Give them all these drugs to lower their vibration, and even still, give them half a chance. Their metabolism is such they will still try to get rid of those drugs. And what it's doing is slowing down the inevitable. The planet is going upward. These souls are coming in are already in higher vibration. They will either help or when they come together and really hinder, you haven't seen death and destruction yet. Not that they're killers, but they will bring forth through them the consciousness of higher authority which will not set. You can't live one minute when this planet is going to the fifth dimension and you hold an evil thought. 
you automatically killed yourself or allow that to come in at will. So it's a change now in matter, in time and in space. It's a change in consciousness, a change in subconsciousness, and a change in ultra consciousness. It means that now these souls and through us if we if, and through them if we will listen to them, we can begin to do while even in the flesh higher things, not making the mistake of slipping backwards because the child shall lead them, as it is many of our mothers and fathers now. When you study the um, occult world, uh, the metaphysical world, and you study how uh, occultic uh, government is, you find that they are big on rituals. You hear a lot about rituals, you know, um, just all types of, whether it's killing somebody, sacrificing somebody, eating babies, I mean, you hear about all types of rituals. What is the use of these rituals? Like, what's the science behind killing somebody on a certain day at a certain time because to the average man it just sounds like it doesn't it doesn't add up like why would they kill this person at this time or you know like 8808 they say that was a big ritual day or on a full moon or solar eclipse what's the science behind all of this well we've just had a four day full moon which supposedly is impossible we had a solar eclipse, which I was warning people about. I shouldn't say warn, I'm just simply say, be wise and be aware of a solar eclipse. It was followed by the summer solstice on the 21st of June. And from the time of the summer solstice, the even time of daylight and night on our planet, moon and sun, etc., to the time of the first when the eclipse happened, they were sacrificing, they were putting forth things because planets have energy fields. Stars have energy field. The stars are what we see in the sky, but remember all stars are suns, and there's nothing new under a sun. So what we've done again then, we've taken the energy that's drawn from a planet and a sun, which means at that time things can be transfused. Energy can enter into that planet. Energy can be taken from that planet. The sun's always real planets. When that happens, the exchange of energy is through usually the strongest or the weakest portion of that planet. So then you have to understand what's in the ground. Where are your crystals? Where is your gold? Where are your mercury? Where are the things that can conduct energy? So you go to those areas, and they used to mark it. And I'm going to say one thing, and I usually won't share this much knowledge, but for you I will. But I'm not going to go any deeper than this. Granite surfaces have quartz crystals in them. And wherever you have granite or you have crystals and stuff, they pull and exude energy. Well, you have these great big behemoths and things, there's signs that beneath there is something else. Those are markers. So it means that the earth can vent through those things, or that's what they call a natural or artificial vortex. Once you can understand that, when there's going to be exchanged, you stuff up those vortices by pulling out or taking in what you want. Since we don't claim our own planet and use those, then you have a draconic enemy on the fourth dimension that doesn't care anyway, that now uses it for us. There'll come a time when we'll take back the powers to understand where the, where the planet breathes and goes and use them ourselves. Even then, they still have to make sacrifices because they still can't, with all of their so-called mind control, cannot do it. They have to have that human blood, especially with melanin because of the high vibration, to still get it done. Mm. No, good. I was just listening. Well, I'm, just, uh, I'm, I'm pretty much complete with that. Okay. It's the, it is the use of magic, M A J I K, that helps things to understand energy centers, where they're located, what draws them in, if they say crystals or iron or magnets, whatever it is. And by drawing that or exuding that, they can begin to pull in the energies they want and control what else comes into the planet. The planet is receiving seven rays all the time, minimum. But what ray of life that comes in that we should be using, these draconic individuals have now used magic to channel only that to us they want us to get, and even have the nerve now to pull from you that other higher source or to make you get rid of it yourself. Mm -hmm. Now this draconic uh, race, force, or whatever, you, you keep mentioning this, uh, that they exist on the fourth dimension and they come down to the third dimension. How did they come about? Why would the universe create this draconic, uh, this evil energy? How did this evil energy come about that's constantly trying to suppress 
suppress us. When the souls left the mind of the universal prime creator, they took on self-analysis. And that that they knew when they were combined with the all, they then forgot when they became one soul. And that's what's called the journey of the soul. Then, in not understanding that whatever you think on a soul plane exists, they begin to think, well, what is the opposite of all this? If all this is going like this, what more is there? They begin to give energy to what more where it was. It wow. created in their mind everything. This is why they tell you to guard your thoughts closely and be careful what you ask for, because you might get it. Those are sage ideas. Most of these ideas that you see reduced to one-liners have taken in a lot of thought. It took a lot to be able to say those kind of things. You have in Ephesus, we war not against prince and blood, but uh, we have flesh and blood against principalities and evil in high places. Those high places can be government, those high places can be seats of consuls in higher dimensions. But when you war against them, you must understand that you now have created a war. Once you leave Utopia to find out what's outside of Utopia, you may find it. And many souls have done just that. Therefore, they gave energy to the mortal enemies, those who have no souls, because they were waiting for souls to get weak enough so they could take in the bodies that they left. When you have perfection, why do you seek more? But the questioning under the sun is that you will, and most of us do. Later on, we refuse to hold certain thoughts, and they train you to do that. Once you do that, you're taking back the journey of the soul and not letting the those that you've created control you any longer. Interesting, very, very interesting. So this draconian energy, is it always, I mean, like, you see what we're going through now. Uh, we're going to go through it quicker than things will get better down here on Earth. But let's say 100,000 years from now, are we going to be going through the same thing down here? Years mean nothing. Time is nothing. It's what is learned that is different. You won't be doing it down here. You may try to do it up there, mm -hmm. but dimensions have no parallel. They have no ups, no downs. This planet, you will not be doing it on. Because this planet, and now I'm going to get into some mating qualities and say I want to do this near the end of the tape, so I hope that you're, that you're ready for that because now when I'm moving to this is where I'm going to pretty much have to explain everything I can explain or want to explain at this time, or able to explain at this time. The planet is going from the third dimension to the fifth dimension. It simply means you're going from kindergarten to advanced degrees. No, to college and universities. Mm -hmm. You skip middle school and high school. <laughs> if you do that, then you are supposed to have a little bit more knowledge, which is supposed to be leading toward wisdom, and a little bit more perfect than when you were as a child. Remember the old thing? I was a child, I spoke to the child, I did the child to the child, and I became a man or a person in consciousness. I put away childish things. The planet is putting away childish things. It's begged for it. It's asked for help. And that help has now been granted. The planet has been allowed to go from the third to the fifth dimension. On the fifth dimension, they don't war. On the fifth dimension, they don't have a lot of evil negative things. On the fifth dimension, they can travel in mind anywhere they want to go. On the fifth dimension, they create as they go if they want, or they understand whatever they create they're responsible for, so they don't use creative energy silly. Like we do, we throw away our sperm, we throw away our egg, we throw away our energies, we throw away our mind, we throw away everything on drugs. You cannot make the mistake on the fifth dimension because you won't remember how to do it. You had to relearn and recall how to continue to do the stupidity and this ignorance that we practice here. That will be taken away. But it will be taken away because now you're willing to have that being done. We have now, say and choose my words carefully, two sons. I always say, well, some people have three daughters, <laughs> but I mean son with S-U-N. Our planet needs magnetism. It is magnetic energy that was interfered with when the moon was steered into to do this. This is what the draconic forces did. Under a moon, things don't go right. In fact, original sin was the moon. That was the name of it. Mm -hmm. Sin. It's called in sin. Later on, the natives here call it Luna. And of course from Luna you get the word lunatic. It meant that any time that generating thing that was called a moon was in place, it changed the frequency to electrical. Electrical is not what you need. There are three types of energy that a planet under a sun can utilize. Each one will decree what will be born on it and what will happen to it. Org energy is the highest one under a sun. Org means organic, 
orgasm, organism, original. It is or. It is from the Creator. It is the highest form of energy of a planet to use under a sun. Step down from that is magnetism. Three forms. North, south, and no. Or polarities. The no in there is where all these wonderful ships operate on that people don't believe in again because it nullifies everything else. And in the no void, you can go to higher or lower. The magnetism has a high frequency and a lower frequency. Beneath that is electricity. We are not only now operating on one of the highest, the lowest principles to still operate on, but the lowest part of that, extra low frequency. I have a tape out called Elves, not Elves, are killing you. Extra low frequency, Elf waves, not Elves, these what they call gnomes and trolls and things like that in the inner world, are killing you. Extra low frequency can give you nothing of value. It takes everything of life force from you. I have a presentation while in town. I hope I can even give it. We'll find out. Called Life Force. Once you get to that kind of operative level, you're so low in frequency that everything that is a higher plane almost you forget or you can't even channel to handle. To get that done, the earth start crying out and say, enough. I've gone through this. Earth is a being. By the way, a planet is a life form just like you. Like, like life forms live within and on you. You live within and on this earth. This planet got help from the Creator, from the Creator God, from Universal Prime Creator, and was given the dispensation to have a second son be brought in here. And a second one son is now brought in here. Uh, I don't know when this tape will be shown, but tomorrow, as I speak to it, I'll be getting into that even more so uh, in the lecture that I'm giving. Thanks to you, brothers, for bringing me in. But on this frequency of earth, the magnetism is what was asked for and given. So another sun came in. It was first seen. It was seen about 2002. It actually came in in 1999. That's when they started this big diversion, which they now call the, the wars that were fought because of supposed 9-11, another big tragedy that never should have been, really didn't happen the way it was possessed to happen anyway. But from that, it was seen at that time, but people didn't believe what they were seeing because they were distracted. Since that time, it has ceased to exist. It ceased to exist now on a magnetic plane, and not everybody can see that. There are certain little tricks that you can do to see it, which I'm not going to give on this day, but there are certain ways you can even see it, or you can photograph it. Normally we don't see it because the frequency is of a higher magnetic order. At times to time, under certain things that they've done to our Earth through chemtrails, we get a glance of it. But the energies you can feel. Magnetic energy is restorative, balancing, healing, helpful, positive. That energy now is flowing throughout our planet and is causing people to be restored, to be balanced, to begin to think deeper, to be more spiritual. Electricity is what they're putting up with these towers. And that's one of the things I talk about, the towers of terror. These towers where we started our whole conversation earlier, thanks to you, Brother Rich, that are causing the frequency of Earth to remain low and trying to stop it from going high. That's why they have to have so many, because they're now not only fighting this, the planet, they're fighting the second sun. They're fighting a planet who says, our time is come. They're fighting a planet. If you are a tenant in a building, you tear up the electricity, you tear up the plumbing, you break the gas pipes, you make you deface and mar that, you curse, you scream, you affect your neighbors, and you do not own the building, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when you're going to be discharged. We're getting discharges now. Mm. The landlord is coming back to claim <laughs> the planet. You didn't own the play, you broke your lease, no time for it. And not only that, but there's going to be original refurbishing of this particular building and you're not fit to live in it. Therefore, you're going to see mass deaths now. It's going to hurt. You're going to see people leaving here so fast in all kind of ways. Because once you cannot synchronize the vibrations of your molecular structure and body with that of the planet, your physical body cannot exist. Your soul wants to get away anyway. Any excuse, you just gave it one. I'll tell the brothers and sisters or whoever, whatever race they think they're in, if they have souls, to hear these words. You cannot do pharmaceutical drugs if you have melanin. And the better your grade of melanin, the stronger your vibration of melanin, you can't even play with it. You play with it, you die or get sick. 
because death is dis-ease. Dis-ease is imbalance in the magnetic field. Easement is when, it's like an easement you take property with. This easement is when you get one out of nine. Our planet seeks balance. You must seek balance. And you cannot get balance through pharmaceutical drugs. You are herbalist. You do seeds. You use roots. You use leaves. You use sunshine. You get natural fermentation. When you do the drugs, and if you notice now on these co commercials and advertisements, they'll tell you use this particular drug to get this results. And then in the background, it takes them a whole two minutes to tell you all the side effects that are happening. Yeah. They're telling you the truth. But even so, if you're already doing the drug, you will not hear the truth because you're living a lie. When you live a lie, you will hear the lie. Your vibrations are what you create within your mind. Now you must go back to natural. You must use focused thought. You must use magnets. You must use gold. You must use diodes to block these other things to give yourself a chance to even get the power in you to pull down the higher resources. We have a second sun. It's magnetic. Our planet is more and more becoming magnetic each day. That's why the poles are melting. Everything materialistic is dissolving. But you can get through that if you can raise your vibrations to match that of your planet. If you follow the false teachers, the false drugs, the false methodology, and the falsity that is theirs, you will stay there captive. But worse than that, they even vamp you. If you will stop it, they will not be able to even touch you. You cause too much offensive, and what they'll have to do, they have to send your own kind to get you, because they can't. And they have many readily people that come to soldiers and policemen and everything else and take you out, even when they can't. So you never see them because they work on the middle plane. When you see them, they will now be transforming. And that's what the Ikes and so are trying to tell you now. They now will not be able to hide their shape any longer because the magnetic field will make them not possible. They can't live on the fifth dimension. A quickened soul can. Mm -hmm. uh, real quick, Dr. Blair, for anybody who's watching this tape that may not uh, have heard you before, heard a lot of metaf metaphysical speakers uh, before, I want you just to give a a brief definition of the word frequency because we've used this word a whole lot during this interview so I want can you just please explain what 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 does you know people and people here they understand it but they don't understand it so could you just say like you hear you say frequency of vibration a whole lot during your lectures so could you just give a brief definition of uh you know uh, what 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 those mean frequency is one thing vibration is another thing resonance is another thing I said org magnetic and electrical. Resonation is the resonation of everything that exists, that is organic. Magnetic is vibration. No, magnetic, yeah, it's vibration. Frequency is electrical frequencies. This is why they say the frequency of this and that. Each one of those is a different rate of vibration. Mm -hmm. The original vibration would be what would have an organic energy, which is everywhere and everything. That's why we're people eating organic food, looking for original man, having an orgasm, creating a life force and dispelling. Each of these things is a rate of vibration that is higher than the other. Complete understanding is to use those vibrations as you would. You become what they call then a, 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 a ruler and traveler on the stars, using the Merkabhava. Mer ka bo van ba ban. Simply meaning the vehicle of transportation of light. The ka and the ba, the spirit and the soul, and a vehicle that can move. Once you can utilize all these frequencies and vibrations and resonances, you can travel anything you want, and anybody you want. Mm. And stop off, get off, spend some time. The planet spending time on this one is no longer going to be op optional. It's going to be those who have certain passports because the frequency now is going to go to the overall resonance of the fifth dimension. That's pretty much how I mean when I interchange it. Uh, if it didn't explain it, I did the best I could. Okay. All right. Let me also say this if I made too, though. I, I don't know where you're close to on your... Um, About uh, 20, 20 minutes left. Okay. Uh, you can go on. All right. Well, you could just, uh, if it's on you, if you want to say something now, you could just go ahead and say and then... No, I was going to just simply say... Um, the people who view this tape are the people who have consciousness and understand where I'm coming from and you agree or disagree. Uh, we do have websites and all like that, so I can give that now if necessary. Yeah, 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 give yeah. It. We have a website, it's www.themetacenter.com. Now you have to put the, uh, the prefix 
the T-H-E, because we registered in 73, fortunately or fortunately, and it's registered as the Meta Center at Aquarian Church. People are stolen Meta Center now. Yeah. So if you just dial Meta Center, something else. And they even have a nerve to have some of my tapes up there, which they never paid me for. Wow. Uh, and therefore, people think they found our site. It's not our site. You have to type in the Meta Center, T H E M E T A C E N T E R. So it's www.themetacenter.com. There we have pictures of monotony gold, and there are diff there's a, um, nine different kinds of them. We have pictures of our magnetics, there are 39 different kinds of them. We have pictures of the diodes, there are 11 different kinds of them. Each of those things are tools that I suggest everybody try to use. The diodes to protect you from radiation and to let you still use the technology that makes your life easier. The magnets to speed up pain, or to speed up healing and take away pain. And they have that red blood cell that has iron in it. Take on the oxygen molecule so you speed up and it draws it to the area of need, whether it be your veins or knee or back or wherever. And of course, the monotomy gold, which lets you rise to a higher dimension, put your whole body on a higher residence from the frequency that you're now usually used to. So we feel we saw problems. I saw problems. And as director, they got to be the right and the consciousness and the time to search for solutions. We offer solutions up there. Brain boosters that are natural. Pain relievers that are natural. Augmenters and enhancers that are natural. Things that can work for sex. We have we even have, we have sex with things for male penises and stuff like that to draw more blood and stop these PSA tests, these positive antigens and stuff, what they're doing. Things for females. All of these things can enhance the drive of energy for sex, which is also life force. We have found everything we could. We have immune system enhancers using echinacea, using about 18 different kinds of different things for immune. Delinolated olive beef extract, rather than just olive beef extract. We try to get the best. And of course, we have, of course, the monatomic gold, which to me is one of the best things you have. We have it in liquid form, which you take it and goes to the small intestine, or we have it in liquid form that can go and aspirate, go up to the uh, hypothalamus. We have it in a powdered form. The powdered form is the best for psychic ability. It'll help you to dream in color, even help you to ask for Jack and three in three uh, days time, in three nights time if you would. The catch is, don't start using the gold if you're not going to give up your bad habits. And if you know they're bad habits in the subconscious, the gold will bring that out and make you argue with yourself. Because you cannot lie to yourself, even though people try. To lie to yourself, you have to use the drugs, and you have to get out of it so you can then lie. Gold brings you into it. So then you'll really begin to see demons and everything else because now you don't know what you're doing. So we have things that are offered there for helpfulness but it's for people who are willing to make the stride, who understand the quickening, and are willing to work with themselves too. So that's what I like to give up. This phone number, of course, on our landline is 708-422-6685. 708-422-6685. 24 seven, somebody will answer, or machine will answer, but it will tell you how to get directions to it. I do give lectures, I do give workshops. I have four workshops that I give, one, human aura and how to see it, one, law and lawlessness, one, understanding and operating on energy fields, and the other again, uh, knowing who you are, why you are, and where you are. Not what you are, but who you are, why you are, and where you are. These are things that I give. Hopefully people will be interested in nothing giving. I thank you for letting me put that in near the end of our tape and in of your time. Of course, of course. All right, now we are uh, constantly here. We 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 know uh, in this metaphysical community that um, our thoughts create our everyday reality. We are, as we sit here in this room, a collection of our past thoughts. Somewhere in your life, you thought about being in New York doing this interview, and somewhere in my past, I thought about being an interviewer. So we, that brings us to this physical manifestation. Now. It sounds easy, your thoughts create your reality, all you got to do is think a certain way. But for some reason, people aren't creating the reality they want at all, brother. People have, are creating havoc, they're creating they're, the depression, worrying. They, I, mean, I, mean, I'm, I mean, I'm sure every, nobody wants to be worried about bills. And if uh, your thoughts create your reality, a person's like, well, why, why I still got bills? Why I still got to worry about these bills every month? Why I'm late on this payment, late on that payment? So what are some ways that 
we could work on controlling our thoughts because if we don't control our thoughts somebody else is going to control it for us that's what they got the commercials the tv for and all that so what are some ways we could uh, control our thoughts so to have more mental clarity to create the reality that we truly desire the bills are going away because the economy is collapsing the debts are discharged right and left in bankruptcy you have banks and bankers discharging their debts going bankrupt forming the next week another whole bank took all your money created another bank they tell you you can't you have no indebts you're indebted only because of the consciousness on fiat what they call paper money which they don't even believe in they control you through it that's why they created it in the first place you have now a dollar collapse on the open market you have both the yen the pound sterling and in general the euro which is worth now one and a half one in seventy five seventy percent more than the dollar the peso is not too far below the dollar whoever thought that would happen it is a collapse in the monetary system which is a false system in the first place indebtedness is only to your creator and that's because you chose to be separate from the creator you're indebted to no fiat or fiat personnel we have chosen because of our need and our greed and their greed and their need for us they put us under this particular thing they don't even follow the laws they make because they have no laws they have legalities mm. this is why many of the people now and many of the brothers and sisters and others too brothers and sisters having no delineation of skin but of consciousness this is why they're now fighting the collapse of this system they're letting the dollar fall the inflated dollar because they want to introduce the Amero. If they introduce the Amero, they will have the Amero for both Canada, Mexico, and no sovereign protectorates, none sovereign protectorates, and the United States will be one, one currency. Over in Europe, they have the Euro. In China, they have another thing for them. In Africa, they have another thing for them. They want to be able to control people's buying habits and people's minds through fear and the use of one currency now. Right now, the whole economy, the whole economy is gone. They tell you your credit standard now. Well, if you're finding out now, it's even been brought out that the fiat money fee, which is excess fees paid on debt loan, is now more than the original loan. That should never be. It means, again, you're being controlled. Now people are saying, say bankrupt, right off the bat, they'll start making a deal with you because when you go bankrupt, you give up the thought of ever paying back fiat money because you've already paid it, especially if you have metal in where they've already used your labor. You know, people are trying to get reciprocity again, like different repatriation and so on like this. We, anything here means to undo something that was done before. Forget that it was done before, you forget why you're here and why you're in the circumstances. Remember, but then no longer obey their laws because they are not laws. They change their laws every day. Mm. They change their lawyers every day. <laughs> in these cases, we change our lawyers when you find out they're already equipped. Okay? <laughs> so I'm simply saying, there's only one law you have to obey. Universal law. Universal. There when you, you do that, the, the indebtedness begins to dissolve as it is now because mm -hmm. people are saying, you take taking my home. you got an adjustable rate mortgage. You take away the equity in my building. You devalue my property. If they can tell you that Pluto didn't exist and then bring it back six months later, they can tell you your bills don't exist, but they can bring it back six months later in the form of fees attached to it. We're living in a false economy at a time of an awakening. All this will pass. Most people that are wise are going into gold, going into silver. Why? Because the value of the paper dollar is worse than that of the other, and no matter what they change it to, at least these other precious metals can be used. But keep in mind one other thing. They're only usable under a system that we're recognizing. People do not carry gold bullion in their pants, in their pockets or their purses. It is an accountability thing that is stored somewhere. Accountability means mental. You're always as rich as your mind lets you be if you're following natural law. You're as rich as they let you be if you're following unnatural legalities. They are not legal. The planet will soon have a time when all you'll be able to do is to exist through consciousness, getting what food you can, what water you can, because all this other will be taken away. It's a horrible thing to look at, but it must be about for the ascension of our planet. And this is why we're seeing all these things going through now provincial that should not even be. Interesting. Very very well put, I must say. Thank you. Okay, so uh, before we close up, is there anything additional you would like to add or to say to the people that, uh, you know, will, will view this tape? Focused thought. You are never without hope. If I thought with all 
the hells, thinking of hell as being a burning place and, and bad things happening that I have been through in my ignorance, only to have enough sorrow and sadness to understand wonderfulness and gaiety when it's brought to me. I now know how to live life. I had to learn that your loved ones, things that you relish and so can be taken from you, but your thoughts can never be taken from you. Now I've learned how to enjoy life. I've learned how to get rid of some fears. I say, how can you say what you're saying? I can't say anything more. They took my wife, who was very much in love with me. They took my money, which I had a lot of, but could have had, trying to save her life. And I understood that money is a thing and a tool. Happiness cannot be bought. If a soul brings you happiness, be happy. Don't ask what will happen tomorrow if they leave me. Live for that day. Each day that you live and renew, you bring forth more of the same thing that you're now used to. Mm -hmm. Each time that you fear it, you're putting a cloud over what is already happening to you. I'd say focus thought. If you focus your thought each night before you go to sleep, don't just go to sleep. It's like a precious vehicle that you take into a bad neighborhood, leave the keys in the ignition, the doors are open, and walk away. Tell yourself what's going to happen to your body. Demand as a God to the universal crime creator, your Godhead, that this be given because I am aware and that my demand is only what I can pay by honoring you, by understanding that I am a child and I'm still seeking help. And then see what happens to your life. Things change as you change. Focus thought now. Get rid of your worst enemy because it puts you on a plateau where you don't have an enemy. They recognize this and they'll leave you alone because they won't even see you. Mm. To them, on the mental plane, you're invisible. The only ones that will still try to come after you are the ones they've mistaught, created, and then they will find soon that they will be powerless too because when they start doing some of these crimes under a full moon or a full sun, they will get sick and turn on themselves. You're going to see that happening too. Armies turning upon themselves because of the consciousness. Focus your thought. Be happy you have life. Live each day fully as though it was the last, and you'll find it of being many more that will come to pass. Very, very well put, brother. Uh, ooh, well, signing out, this, this has been a pleasure. One of the best interviews I've ever done in my short career as a videographer. I look forward to doing many more interviews with you, brother. Um, once again, my name is Brother Rich. You could catch me on, in Brooklyn. Monday through Saturday on Fulton Street between Hanover Place and Bond Street from about uh, 1130 to 630. Um, Dr. Delbert Blair, once again, a pleasure. And I'll uh, see you tomorrow at the lecture, brother. Very much. Thank you very much. Great bless us all. Stay safe, stay sane, and stay sovereign. <laughs> all right. Peace, brother. A pleasure to interview one of the master metaphysical teachers out here in the community. Dr. Delbert Blair. How are you doing, Dr. Delbert Blair? Well, Rich, I'm doing well, especially now that you're here and I'm here in your wonderful city that <laughs> I've waited now, what, 14 years to get back to. Wow. So I appreciate you extending that to me, and it's an honor. Yeah, well, all right, well, we got a lot to talk about. You got the lecture happening tomorrow. Today, we're going to do the interview today, uh, try to get as much information out the master as possible. Um... Before we get started, I want you to show the people you have some information on the diodes. So I want you to show the people uh, what particular information that you have that's extremely important for them at this time in their life before we get started. Okay. Well, I appreciate the deference and respect. I'm not a master. I've never claimed to be a master. That's been a title sometimes it's been put upon me. Mm -hmm. But it's not a master. I can never master metaphysics. And that's the journey that I've partaken in this lifetime to understand metaphysics. You have masters around, I'm not one. Mm -hmm. As a student of metaphysics, which I guess I'll be for lifetimes, I find that there's really no other venture, anything I can do on this planet that's more worthy, more intriguing, more interesting, and more time consuming. So with that one, I respect you and respect me for saying that, but I'm not a master. I'm simply a teacher, teaching some, learning from others, and that's about it. On diodes, now we can definitely talk about that. Diodes in general are two-way rectifiers if you're using electronics. Now most people get it confused because in electronics you have things that act as a capacitor, capacitor and a channeler which carry current. What these are natural products. There's nothing electrical about them. They're made from magnets and crystals 
And the whole catch is a secret formula, which nobody so far has been able to back engineer. And I've had them to say, oh, I can make this into a fed egg. Go ahead and try it. Uh, what they do is to stop the low frequencies that are in many things that are called now radiation from harming you as much as they normally would and completely stopping them on some levels. Now, let me explain that, too. We have, uh, in 251 major cities here in the United States, towers, the 252, there's one that it doesn't. These towers have different heights, and the heights and the way they look mean certain things. You have some towers that are used for cell phones, for government defense switches, for carrier ways, for uh, utility companies, and then sometimes some just plain boxes that corporations use to, to cheat and not have to pay for some of the facilities that are being used. But the ones that you see that are for the cell phones can be very dangerous. And the ones that you see that are 360 foot tall, they seem to have seals or screens up their veins on them, they're extremely dangerous. Those are used for mind control. The other ones, which I'm now going to go into for defense of, are used to get cell phones and things like this working. All the cities now here are talking about Wi-Fi. And they're all talking about next year when all cities are major Wi-Fi. Well, all cities, 251 of the 252 major ones again, went Wi-Fi sometimes. Yeah, it's supposed to be more fast and more powerful than Wi-Fi. And that's already on the market? Yeah, it's on the yeah, so Through on cell phones? Yeah, through cell phones. Because I know they have it overseas where, um, see, what 3G allows you to do is it allows you to talk to somebody and watch them and look at them at the same time. Oh. You know, and they have that overseas. So, you know, now, probably next year, AT&T offers it now. Other cell, T-Mobile and them hasn't caught on yet. But what you'll see now is people talking on their phone while they're looking at the person that they're talking, talking to. to. Yeah. I didn't know, but you call it 3G. 3G network, so you yeah. You just talk. This is why I say yeah. I'm not a master, I'm a student. I always <laughs> will be a student. So, in doing that now, you've got your, what you've got to say is a TV, radio, communicating device that also is being used now to transcript your own sound and audibility. With that in mind, it makes it even more dangerous because it now means you're using television type carrier waves in addition to the sound waves, mm -hmm. in addition to all these other things you're using, which means that all that energy is now going into your head. Mm -hmm. It means that all that energy now is potentially frying your brain, it can cause damage to the optic thalamus nerve, to the tympanic membrane, to the throat, and of course, since this is your head, Mm -hmm. your brains mm -hmm. and I think most of us need brain repair anyway I know I do <laughs> I definitely can't have anything that's going to cause my brains to be deficient or any of the neuron centers or so to, to to operate on a lower frequency so all the more reasons why I say you need diodes with these things in addition to which there are people that walk around and they have in their ear something that's called a Bluetooth yes now they've even got some new uh, higher modifications for that but let's just take the standard Bluetooth there was a convention that they had in Las Vegas this summer. It was an electronic convention with companies from all around the globe uh, coming there to display their products. And they came out with a blackjack, a blue, a blackjack, a blackberry, and some other things. Samsung came up without giving plugs. Anyway, these things are emitting up to 98 frequencies of modulation, or what they call megahertz. Two megahertz is a sufficient. After three, you begin to radiate yourself. These things generated 98, which means they're very detrimental. I'll be very nice with the choice of words. Very harmful to potential, and people don't have a clue. They just use them and put nothing on them. The diodes, again, as I say, boost up the speed of the wave, of the carrier waves. The, fire, the faster the speed, the less harmful potentially to you, because the fast ones, as I say, we walk through a sea of that anyway. But because of that, the company had to make something called a Bluetooth dial, okay? And it's a digital. Almost everything now is no longer analog because it's much too slow a frequency carry away. Well, well th that's the question I want to ask you. You know, because you know they change all the televisions is going from analog to digital. That's right. I think it's next year. You're going to have to, and if you don't want to switch it from analog to digital, you're going to have to get a converter box or something like that. That's right. And then they make you pay for it too. Right yeah. now they're giving it away. That's also a lot of um, interest behind that too. Mm -hmm. Because when they do that, that's not the reason that they're doing it. They're doing that because all, they want to be able to control all frequencies within your body and all frequencies within the neighborhood and everything else. But analog, they go. 
which means that there is now a carrier wave or a wind or an energy that is now transmitted without a wire directly to an apparatus. And one of the apparatuses that everybody has is a cell phone. What's interesting about the cell phone is that now you, some people now have two or three cell phones in one family. There's getting the commonest television sets, and when television sets first came out, of course, they were very expensive. Now they're economically feasible. So, when you use that cell phone, and I see you've got one there too, and I've got one here too, but the difference between those that are aware and those that aren't is what's on the back of this cell phone. And this cell phone here, there's a little gadget, and that is called a diode. Put that up, let me, let me zoom in. There you go. A diode that you see there, can be bought by anyone that wants it. We're one of the distributing places and companies for it. And that's what it looks like when it's packaged. You put this on your cell phone and you put it right over the battery or any other flat surface. What that does is to raise the frequency of the cell phone wave that's coming in to make you be able to hear audibility, to hear, to hear sound at it again. Low frequency, and it's very easy to understand, is very dangerous. The lower the frequency, potentially more dangerous is that frequency. High frequencies, well, our whole planet is full of high frequency. We walk through a sea of frequencies each day. In fact, if we could see like an x-ray machine or so, we'd be afraid because we see lines of energy just everywhere, like cobwebs and spider webs. But the low frequencies are the ones that are bad for the central nervous system, for the left and right hemispheres of the brain, for the eyes, for the ears, everything electrical and everything magnetic within your body they tend to distort. And when you use these cell phones, the potential now, it used to be a big argument about it. I was a Dr. Carlo at one time that was hired by some of the manufacturers of these cell phones to prove that cell phones were safe. Instead, he said after eight months study, they're far from anything but safe. And I have to agree, as many other scientists and researchers do agree, they are very harmful. The potential, when you hold this thing up to your ear and you start talking, after four and a half minutes, your whole, if you could see that, and we have, I'll be showing it at our lecture tomorrow, some of these infrared photographies and stuff like this, everything and everything begins to turn red. Red means radiation. Slow frequency, harmful radiation. When the diode is put on it, within five and a half minutes afterwards, all that is corrected. And if you use a diode on a regular basis, it never starts in the first place because what it does is to raise that low frequency to a frequency that is not harmful to your body. So in that sense you say it's getting rid of radiation. Toward that end, we have 11 different kinds of diodes because what we also understood, that particular device, and by the way now, they're not only making these cell phones now that you can talk on them, but as you know, and you could probably tell me about them, play games on them, yeah. store material on them, get a whole codex list up in there. I mean, it's just now just like a walking television set or so. Well, they, they have something stronger than Wi-Fi called a G, 3G network. Have you heard of that? No, I haven't. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's supposed to be faster and... and uh, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. That will also mean, uh, as I have also told people, again, anyway, you saw that one. This is the one for Bluetooth that's digital. Mm -hmm. When they have their way, this nebulous day, these people who seemingly want to play games with us and look about us being kids. And as I state again, there's no such thing as a, a soul birthing a kid. You birth children. Yeah. Kids means baby goat to the goat god Baphomet, actually sacrificing you to a lower species at birth, which you're not, especially if you have melanin because it helps you to increase your frequency on everything else you're doing. But because of that, they want control. What happens now, when you use the cell phone, you never turn it off. You will say, well, put it up like this, get ready to use it, dial in the number. When they finish with it, they close it, or else they hit the off button, and that's it. It didn't go off. It's constantly radiating you, and if you have it in your pocket 24-7, it's radiating you 24-7. When you have a group of people coming together with cell phones, everybody is equally radiating each other. Mm -hmm. That would be a convention, rap concert, hip-hop, symphony concert, church, school, meetings of Congress, doesn't matter. Because these phones can't be turned off unless you take the battery out. Now pretty soon after next year, even that won't do it. But right now, if you take the battery out of the back, it's not emitting any kind of radiation. 
So when people say, I just turned off my cell phone, they didn't. At night, when you're charging it up, you're getting radiated. Along with the TV that's in your room, your radio that's in your room, your hair dryer that may be in your room, every other thing. Because all these are emitting low frequency. And low frequency, at the very best, using the best adjectives I can, is potentially extremely harmful to the human body and the brain. So because of that, we also had uh, the company, what is called a slim pocket diode. This is the way it looks here. And of course, we have a packaging in it again. It looks like a, little, a square uh, peg of wood, a block of wood that's only about a half a centimeter thick. It's very lightweight, but very protective. You put that one on the left side, one on the right side, and you're setting up now a energy field around your body that is protective. Mm -hmm. Of course, and people have said before, well, Blair, you said you can use one. Yes, you can. If you use one, put it on your left side. You said you can use two. Yes, if you use two, put it on your right side. But then I've heard you say, well, people have six and seven. Yeah, there's people that are smart and are willing to spend the money on helping themselves. You can't put too many of these things on you because of all these towers that are up everywhere, all these electrical and, and magnetic frequencies that are everywhere, you're walking through it each day. So the more you have protection to solidify your own body's electrical field and not have it tap, just like a vampire would tap you, then you're protecting yourself. So you can't put too many on these bodies. Some people I know actually have 12 on them. And those are usually people that have studied this in our group. I usually have about six on me at any time. Or, you know, it's just, anyway, the point is again, when you see something, if you were going to walk into an electrical field, like you have in some of these generating stations, as soon as you get there, because of all the wires and stuff, apprehension waves should run through your head. Uh-oh, what am I getting into? You can hear the hum there. Mm -hmm. You know that you shouldn't be around it too long. That's just sixth sense, as they would call it. Mm -hmm. Well, if you could hear the hum as you walk down city blocks, as you walk into shopping malls, it would be the same thing. And so for the wise, you try to protect yourself with that one. And what it does is two things. It either closes out your own electrical field, putting up a block for it, or enhances your own field, protected from the other radiation that's coming in. It works the quickest way it can to suggest it. And then, of course, once you understand your body, your brain, your central nervous system, your limbs, your joints, your organs are at risk, then you have to say, well, what about my food? If you think about your food, your food is really, in many cases, radioactive. Not only that, but it's genetically modified in many cases. And that's another story. If you wish in the interview, we can go there too, about Brother Rich. But these genetically modified foods are also, in many cases, put in radioactive cans or given x-rays and stuff as the food is there. And so therefore, not only can they be poisonous to the human system, but they also can contain radiation. We have what is then called a dial plaque. This is just a picture, generally, of the dial plaque. You can see the size of it again. What I'm going to do is to also turn it around slowly, and you can see it's very thin. And on the back, it's more or less plain, except for the seal of the company that makes it. This one you usually put like this on your counter or chopping block or whatever you happen to have and you sit your groceries up on it. There's a picture there of the groceries sitting upon a diode plaque. I usually suggest two diode plaques because then if you have a shopping bag with two of them, you can put every content on there and up to 18 inches above the surface of this plaque, things will take out radiation and nullify poison. So you leave it on there 15 minutes at the least. Sometimes I'll leave it on overnight if it's an imperishable food because again, you can't get too much of a good thing. Mm -hmm. In this case, you can't get too much of a good plaque. You take out poisons and toxins from your food before you eat it and even after you eat it if you, if you want. So that was then a dial plaque. Okay. I don't have, oh, yeah, I don't have with me a dial pad, but a dial pad is roughly about that long, about that wide and about that thick, one inch thick. We have them thinner, but I like the one inches at least because I want more of the material within it. That's what you're supposed to sit on. You sit on that when you're sitting in front of a computer. You sit on that when you're sitting in front of a TV set. But mainly, it's for automobiles, trucks, cars, or things that work and roll on wheels. 18 wheelers, I've been talking a lot to some of the drivers and stuff, and individually they bought them. In fact, the brother uh, has helped, you know, with me and sponsoring me in here again, Brother Owen, uh, uh, 
um, can't think of his brother's name right now, Marv, Marvin Bowen. He is a driver, and many of the drivers, when you go over the hall, over the road, hauling, they're constantly these big rigs, 18 wheels, and they're sitting up in the cabins of these trucks. When they're sitting up in the cabin of these trucks, you got a CB unit that you 